budgeting your expenses can be a hard task when most of your desires can be fulfilled with just one click. For that very reason, people all over the world have decided to go old school with their budgeting. Yes, we'll be talking about cash stuffing in this video so you can also get started with it. Let's dive into it. What is cash stuffing? You might have heard about cash stuffing through the recent trends on TikTok. But it is in fact, another term for cash enveloping, an old budgeting method that limits your expenses to be made with hard cash only. For a given period, let's say a month, you can decide beforehand how much money you're going to spend on which of your needs. The envelope comes in handy when you're trying to distribute money in different budgeting categories. You're gonna need a rough estimate for how much money is needed in each envelope, but once that's done, you have to stick to it. This method has proven to be very effective, as it completely takes away the comfort of using your credit card. You will always know how much money you've already spent on gas, grocery, or rent, and how much money you've got left to spend on those expenses. Why are people doing the cash stuffing challenge? This old method became really popular a few years ago when a number of TikTokers started practicing this method, and urged their fans to do the same. Because of these influences, a huge population of people started doing the cash stuffing challenge. This challenge created a positive movement among the people and influenced them to save money. As more and more people started doing this challenge, they realized how beneficial it is for their savings and cutting down on costs. Many people believe that most of the extravagant and unnecessary purchases are made on impulse. And if we can take that away, and stick to a pre-planned budget, most of our money problems would go away. You are also less likely to purchase through cash even if you carry a lot of it. It's easy to swipe a credit card and ignore how much you're spending, and how much is left in your account. Many people clean out their checking accounts, and go into debt without even realizing it. When you use cash, you always know how much you're spending, which might make you hesitant to make unnecessary purchases. How to make your budget An important question that beginners might ask is how many budget categories they might need, and how much money they should put into each budget category. Well to answer that question, you first need to divide your expenses into two divisions. The fixed and the variable expenses. The fixed expenses are the ones that you know exactly how much you need to spend on every single month, and they're not going to change for a long time. The two obvious fixed expenses would be your rent and your insurance. It is easy to get the exact sum that you're going to spend on these expenses. The other division is the variable expenses. These expenses usually fluctuate from month to month, and depend on several factors that might increase or decrease their value. Some examples of variable expenses may be your groceries, gas, electricity bill, car maintenance, or entertainment. You can see how your bills for this month may be very different from the last month. Maybe someone from your family is staying over, which would increase the grocery cost, maybe you were to make a trip, because of which you would spend more money on gas. It's not expected of you to know exactly how much you'll spend on the variable expenses, but you can think about how much you usually spend, and make some changes according to what you might be expecting to be different in the following month. It would be helpful to leave a little margin of safety especially if you're a beginner. It might take a while for you to get the hang of it, and make the correct estimates but you have to stick to it. It's all about trial and error, you'll learn from your mistakes and get better at budgeting. Notice how we also had a category for entertainment. Well, you shouldn't be surprised. The cash enveloping method doesn't put a restriction on you having fun. You can still go out with your friends to the movies, order food at home, and do the fun stuff that you like to do. The goal is to know how much money you can afford to spend on these activities, and making sure you don't exceed your limit. One last thing you might want to do is create sinking funds from the money you save each month. We don't know when we might need to spend money on emergencies and one-off expenses. It could be your car maintenance, medical bills, maybe Christmas is near and you want to save up, only you know what you might have to spend on in the near future. Some tips to help you get started. It would be helpful to follow a few precautions when you get started. The first rule is that you should keep three things in mind when using the cash envelope budgeting system. Number one is how often do you get a paycheck. Number two is how often do you want to add money to your envelope. And number three is how much money do you want to spend. These three questions are a good starting point when you're about to begin making a budget, and once you do it a few times, you'll find your own rhythm. 
If making a budget for every single expense is too complicated for you, you might want to start small. Maybe find out the area where you spend more money than you should. Let's say you spend too much on groceries. For the first few months, make an envelope for groceries only. If you think it's working, expand this budget to a couple more areas where you think you might use some cutting down. Once you've mastered the process and feel confident that you can manage all your expenses, then you can take it all the way. The third and possibly the most important precaution is safety. You should always be concerned about keeping your money safe. One of the main reasons why credit and debit cards are used is to avoid holding a large sum of cash. Even if you've got house insurance or renter's insurance, there's a cap on the amount that would be recovered in case of theft or a robbery. It is essential that you keep the money in a safe or in a place that is hard to locate for an intruder. Some people keep their fixed expenses in their checking accounts, as they are fairly large. Can't save money if you lose all of it, so you have to be careful. And lastly, you need to learn the discipline and self-control required to pull this off. It's not easy to resist yourself from buying the nice dress you see online. Some of us have the habit of making impulse decisions when it comes to shopping. It's hard to get out of that habit. You might even break a few times in the process and make those purchases anyway. The important thing is to make sure you try your best and in case you mess up, try again. A few possible drawbacks of cash stuffing. As good as cash stuffing may be for reaching your financial goals, you might have to face a few disadvantages along the way. As I previously mentioned, holding a large sum of cash is not safe. Moreover, it's also really inconvenient to carry cash with you when you're about to go to the store. Some people suggest depositing the money in your account when you're about to make a purchase, and then using a debit card but that sounds like a lot of work doesn't it? Another possible con is that you have to put in a lot of time every month for budgeting, and then reconciliation at the end of the month. Some of you might be parents, who don't have enough time to sit back and watch some TV at the end of the day, let alone make a complicated budget and keep up with it for an entire month. The last complaint that people who do the cash stuffing challenge have is that these days, cash isn't accepted anywhere. With the rise of cryptocurrency, the entire world is moving towards becoming a cashless society. There are a number of restaurants, gas stations, parking lots etc that don't accept cash payments because of the inconvenience. Cash stuffing is obviously not a perfect method of budgeting, but you have to weigh the pros against the cons. If you try it and it proves to be effective in cutting down your costs, putting in some extra work doesn't seem like too big of a price to pay. There are also a number of apps that you may use that can help you keep a track of your expenses, without having to keep hard cash with you at all times. But that's another topic for another day. That's a wrap for this video. Did you learn more about cash stuffing and would you implement it in your budget? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.